die alone. Slurred advice given to me by a drunken mid-40s engineer while I'm freezing at my roommate's company holiday party. Strangely somber, unsolicited advice from a Santa hat wearing guy who, judging by the three empty glasses in front of him, had plenty more to say on the matter. And against my better, still sober judgment, I decide, fuck it, this should be entertaining. And I ask drunken Gandhi, what do you mean? <laughs> he says into the dregs of drink number four again, die alone. But what he said next would plague every decision I made from that day forward, a weighted pause before an almost whispered exodus of pain-riddled understanding. He said to me, die alone before you settle. Never settle words. Probably printed on some inspiring bullshit poster hanging above your unmade bed at home. Never have these words rung home as much as they did coming from a man searching for a silver lining at the bottom of a cheap bar glass. Eyes haunted by a failed marriage littered with warning signs. He said, you have fucking worth. But if you let someone else define the amount of it, you'll always be a glass of half-empty, shitty whiskey, waiting like some accessory on the price is right for someone to guess what that worth might be. He said, you'll always be running, chasing some version of the future you can see coming but can't quite reach. Because he stopped to rest in a city called, well, at least I'm not alone anymore, and decided that it didn't quite fit for shit, but it'll do. You settled. You said you never would, but you settled. You shot for the moon so you could at least land among the stars, but the stars aren't the fucking moon. They're just burning gas, and chances are they're dead anyway. He said, I'm sorry, kid. This life ain't gonna be rosebuds and cheers, but that's no excuse for taking the road that doesn't lead to overcoming your fears. He said, I knew it was wrong, that we didn't fit together like Nintendo game cartridges and PlayStation disc slots. We weren't apples and oranges. We were stagnant rivers and spilled oil. We didn't compliment each other. Only took two problematic beings and made them worse. But I thought if I could build up a dam tall enough that we could at least keep our mess contained, that with time we could sift through the bullshit and find meaning. But I found that when you build up your walls with excuses, there will always be cracks waiting to be filled by the shit that's really missing. When you don't know who you are, you find yourself saying things like, She's not that bright, but hey, she's easy on the eyes. He's not that romantic, but at least he's not violent. He said, when you find yourself, make a list of pros and cons. Ask yourself, am I still on my way to the moon? Or am I just playing around with an old flame? I didn't know what to say. To take back the hundreds of times he must have asked himself, who am I to want more than this? So I just said, I'm sorry. Love can be a tragedy. He said she was never trying to hurt me. She was simply being who she could be around me. I hurt myself by thinking that if I commit to a script with an actress I knew didn't fit, that the ending would somehow be different. Could you only get one shot at this? And I know I may seem like a drunken mess, but I know the difference between good enough and true happiness. Don't wait for divorce to teach you this. You have worth, kid. But you have to find it for yourself. Otherwise, you wind up an exhausted engineer, 40 years closer to the grave than when he started, fucking freezing your balls off at some shitty holiday party that's settled. Never settle.